Hello dear friends, how are you all doing? My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think last night I was just envisioning getting my life together a little bit more. I was anticipating doing like a book haul video of all the wonderful reads I've had, but for some reason it is in my brain today, this morning, to film a book unhaul video from my shelves of books that I have read. I want to unhaul some things. I am already seeing some books that I'm kind of ready to part with and I want to welcome new books into my life like in a book haul but first I just feel this feeling of like almost spring cleaning. I want to reevaluate some books, get rid of some things and I thought I would take you all along with me for that because maybe like a few videos from now all the books that I'll be unhauling I want to do a dedicated video of me taking them to little free libraries around my city take you along with me for that in a dedicated video seeing if we can find some cool new books while replacing them with some of these. So this will just be a fun going through my bookshelves. This is my shelf of books that I have read um, from here all the way down to the last bottom shelf that you can't quite see. So I'll be maneuvering this like tripod around a little bit closer talking about these different books and things and why I want to get rid of them. I think it's just so nice to bring books into the world and like if I just didn't enjoy them maybe they're three stars or whatever the reason may be like just to have them back out into the world so someone else can find them and love them more than me. I definitely have struggled in the past with getting rid of books too quickly and then regretting donating them so with this one I just want to be a little bit more intentional like what am I really ready to part with what do I really think I'm not going to want to revisit or reread. Basically with my shelves, with these, of all the books I keep, my mentality is I wanna keep them because either one, I want to reread them later in my life at some point, or two, I want a friend to come over here and be able to pick anything off of these shelves that I'm like, yes, that book is great. It doesn't mean that like it has to be a book that anyone would enjoy, but just in books that like I personally feel confident in recommending to a friend. Like these are some really strong books that have really good memories for me. I really enjoyed the writing style, the plot, whatever. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you all are doing well. Have some coffee and let's just kind of like, oh, reorganize the life a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. Let's go. Wow, okay, this filming angle is actually so much better than what I started with, so... <laughs> Maybe I just should have filmed the whole intro here instead. But anyway. Oh, these floors are so bad, friends. These are my books. We're gonna start. I have them currently in alphabetical order, which I love. I love to be organized in that way. So we're gonna just go go ahead. I'm already seeing the first book here, which is Ahab's Return or The Last Voyage by Jeffrey Ford. I love this cover so much, so much. I love this cover. And that's the only reason why I want to keep it, but I did not enjoy the reading experience of this. It's a Moby Dick retelling. I thought it was so fascinating going into this plot and then it just, I did not vibe with it. It turned into a really ridiculous, Scooby-Doo, Nancy Drew episode. The characters were all over the place. There was some surrealism. Like it had good vibes, but it just like, it just didn't work. Like it was talking about Ishmael and Captain Ahab and opium dens and manticores. And then the very end of this book was kind of like this magical realism, the power of storytelling kind of vibe. And I'm just gonna put this in like donate bin but we'll revisit it before I actually go to a little free library if I'm confident with my decision to let go of this because honestly like it is such vibes but the actual reading experience wasn't vibes. Get what I'm saying? The ambience, the atmosphere was beautiful. This cover is so stunning. I don't want to part with it but everything else about it can go, you know? So I think for now let's put this in the donate pile. I am also a huge sucker of nostalgic things and sentimental value. I am a sentimental value pack rat. Um, Stephen King's The Bizarre of Bad Dreams. My partner gifted me this for Christmas. If he did not gift it for me many years ago, this would have been a bye-bye book. I did not enjoy this collection of short stories at all, but I'm keeping it because I love my partner and I have a really, really hard time letting go of books that like a loved one has gifted me. So this is staying, but I just want to like make that clear that like 
I have a lot of things on these shelves that I probably won't get rid of even if I didn't enjoy them but because somebody gave them to me that like I'm just really lucky to have that person in my life and I don't want to get rid of something they gifted me. What else do we have on these shelves? Oh yes, okay. I am going to be getting rid of The Church of Marvels by Leslie Perry. Uh, this is a book that I reference a lot if you are interested in like really grotesque turn of the century circuses and like creepy vibes kind of like the night circus or the hourglass factory or anything that takes place during like gross grimy again opium dens like industrial revolution kind of turn of the century about um kind of like a freak show quote unquote freak show the circuses this is great it's a literary fiction really beautiful so many different perspectives and really big overarching plot i really enjoyed this reading experience but I just don't need to hang on to it, I don't think. I really enjoyed it, but I don't need it on my shelves. It's not a book that I think about very often, but it is a good like reference point, I feel, when talking about other books. And I'm like, if you liked this book, you might like Church of Marvels, that kind of thing. So I'm going to part with this. And I think that is it for this first little shelf here because um, the rest of these books are kind of more like classics for me, some of my absolute favorites of all time, like, Anna Historic by Daphne Marlotte, The Anybody's, um, Best Short Stories of Dostoevsky, and then a lot of books right here in this corner are books that I most recently have read. So we have Bride's Head Revisited, Cabo de Gata, Call Me By Your Name, Candide, Call of the Wild, Carmilla, a lot of like classics, and I'm definitely keeping those for sure. So let's pivot a little bit closer yonder way and go to the next shelf. Uh, we have a graphic novel. Do, 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 do. Oh yes, okay. I am going to part with The Dark Hills Divide. Hi, I'm here. Um, by Patrick Carmen. I thought I enjoyed reading this during my actual like reading experience of it, but in hindsight I have not thought about this book once and I don't think I really want to continue with the series. It was enjoyable to read, but it just did not stick with me. Uh, middle grade, YA, children's lit. It's gonna go. Um, I also think I'm going to get rid of The Dying Game by Asa Avdik. This is a really bizarre like Kafka um, Hunger Games kind of vibe. It's just very eerie. It takes place on like a Scandinavian remote coast in the future and there's a game and there's some really random weird things that happen. It was so intriguing and so different and really enjoyable. But again, I haven't thought about it once and I don't think I'm going to recommend it to a whole lot of people. So it was kind of a book that I enjoyed while reading. I enjoyed talking about it in a wrap up, but it just hasn't lingered with me at all. You know what I'm saying? Like I just don't find myself ever thinking about this book. So this one's good to go too. Okay. And for now, I think that's it on these shelves. I'm pretty comfortable with the rest of what's on here. So that feels really good. Like I'm good with keeping these for a little bit. Now we're a little bit lower. I hope it's a little entertaining for me to actually like walk you through my actual shelves right now and what they look like and just going through them alphabetically. I didn't really think about this beforehand, like specific books I wanna get rid of, it's just kind of seeing them. Rather than compiling all of them at once and then just sitting down and telling you about why I'm getting rid of them. So I hope it's enjoyable. Let me know in the comments. I love going through my books very frequently. I would say like once every like two to three months and just like randomly getting rid of books that I just don't think about that didn't have an impact on me. I'm a big believer in like reevaluating the books that we have and like sharing them with the rest of the world. So let's continue on. Uh, we have The Goldfinch. I'm keeping this one because it's such a big book and I'm just so proud that I read it. Um, so we're keeping that one. I just enjoy the spine of it so much. Uh, we have some other things here. Okay, yes. I have Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman. This is a story of me, little old me, loving a book, getting rid of my copy, finding a new copy of it at a thrift store, and just buying it. Bad habits. Bad, bad habits. Um, same actually with this copy of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I read The Handmaid's Tale many, many years ago, got rid of my copy, and then I saw this version, which has these crazy yellow pages and this beautiful spine. And I was like, this is like a collector's edition. I have never seen a book in this format. It's so lightweight. I wish I could tell you all how lightweight this book is. It's like a bar of soap. It's so satisfying. Um, I will never reread this, but I love this version and I think it's nice to have on my shelves and I can loan it out to a friend or a family member who maybe hasn't read The Handmaid's Tale. 
what a unique reading experience in a book like this. But with the case of Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman, I really love the reading experience of this. I had a hardcover book that I thrifted, read it, got rid of it, reflected how much I enjoyed it when I saw the paperback version, was like, I'll just get it from my shelves. I will never reread this. I will never pull it out again. It's in great condition though. I love this format of like a bigger paperback. I really enjoyed this. Literary fiction, slow, mother-daughter relationship again. I don't know what it is, but after reading Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman, I just like kind of never want to read another Alice Hoffman book again. I'm sorry. I just like cannot connect anymore. Not my favorite. So I am totally fine with getting rid of this copy. Great book though. I still will say this is a great book if you are into literary fiction with like just familial relationships. This is a really good one, but um, I don't need it. So this is gonna go away. Okay, this little section here is the L's through the O's. Um, I've talked about this a few times on my channel that like these shelves, I just feel like are not really made for books. <laughs> eh. I feel like they're made more for like records or like bins to put in here. Like they're the perfect square format, but for books, it's just really frustrating. So this video is really segmented by how I can maneuver you around these shelves. And this angle is not flattering at all. So just pretend I'm not here. This one I'm seeing quite a few actually, quite a few in this one that I'm like ready to part with. So first off we have Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrent. I really enjoyed this book and I actually read my dad's copy. So I had to return it to him obviously. And then I saw this one at a used bookstore. It has some water damage. I really enjoyed this reading experience. I really liked this book, but again, it's I'm not gonna reopen this book. I might hang on to it, same with Ahab's Return, until like right before I'm about to donate it to see if my partner wants to read it, because I feel like this is something he would really enjoy. They're based on real characters, a little bit of nonfiction, and I feel like he would enjoy it, so that would be the only reason I would keep it. But again, I just have this bad habit of like finding books that I've already read at thrift stores and picking them up and like never revisiting them again. So I don't really know the point of me doing that. I think it's just like, I liked that book so much I want to own it physically, but there's just no, there's nothing to gain from that because I don't think I will ever reread these kinds of books. So this is a maybe, but I'm going to put it in my donate bin for now. Next we have The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. This is one that has some sentimental value because I read it on the vacation that my partner and I took where we got engaged, but I just... I just did not enjoy this book. I, I thought it was fun at first. It's a little thriller. Jennifer McMahon is really good with like sisters, female friendships, and thrillers, like all entwined together, which is great. But the actual like experience of reading it was fun. It was fun to read a whole book while on vacation because it is like a fast paced thriller, but it's just not enjoyable. I did not really enjoy this reading experience. It's not memorable. I'm ready to get rid of it. And I just really did not like this cover. I'll just say that right now. I do not like this cover. I think it gives like absolutely no information whatsoever. I just find it a really bizarre cover. So I am going to part with this one very easily because I have another book on here further down that I did also read on that vacation that was way more meaningful to me. So I'm going to keep that as the sentimental value. You know what I'm saying? Okay, then we have... An Ocean of Minutes by Taya Lim. This is a book that I listened to as an audiobook and then found this physical copy at a thrift store for like 25 cents. So I was like, um, yeah, I'm gonna take it because this cover is stunning. It's beautiful. This is one again that I feel like my partner might enjoy. It's a science fiction kind of like love story, not a romance. Science fiction love story, not a romance. I'm gonna say it again, not a romance. So interesting, so fascinating, such a gripping book. Um, very confusing to listen to on audio, which is why when I picked it up, I was like, that this would actually be kind of fun to revisit because it does follow like a pandemic in the 1970s. So it's kind of like more of like an alt history science fiction because it does take place in like the 1960s to 70s. And it's just really interesting, um, really fascinating concept. I think it's a truly unique book, but I will never revisit this. Like I just bought it because I was like, oh my gosh, I never see like kind of really under the radar books like this that I've listened to on audio as a physical book. So it was just kind of cool, you know, and it was so cheap, it was like 25, 50 cents. So. I'm gonna see if my partner is interested in reading this. I, again, I feel like this is something he might enjoy, but if not, then it's time to go. But I did enjoy this one a lot. I just don't need a physical copy. And the last one for this shelf is going to be 
The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. This is a YA book, thriller, psychological suspense. I had so much fun reading this. I read it on a solo vacation, so it does have memories, but um, not enough for me to want to keep it. Again, this cover is hideous. And the more time I've spent away from this book, because I read it in December, like the more I just like don't remember the plot, I don't think about it ever. But while reading it, I did think it was a really unique, enjoyable experience. But in hindsight, I just have not thought about this book once. So it's time to go. And I think a younger reader might really enjoy this one. So this one's gonna be a no. So yeah, four books on that one shelf. Look at all that room we just made. Amazing. Now let's just go like even further down and the camera angle is gonna get extra bad. Cool. <laughs> in doing this video, friends, I will say I have now realized again like why I'm so happy I have another bookshelf for my TBR because filming in this corner like I used to when I first started this channel is so aggravating. I'm really close to a window and I don't know what it is today specifically, all the trucks are going by. So if you hear background noise, it's slushy and snowy outside too, and the trucks are so bad. I'm getting so irritated while filming. So if you hear really loud street traffic, that is the reason. But I'm just so happy I'm like tucked into a corner when I film my other videos. Um, and I guess I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, <laughs> I am gonna go take you all over to my TBR shelves as well and unhaul some books for my TBR. Because uh, there are some books on there that like I just, in doing my TBR jar challenge, I realize I just never want to pick up and I'm like avoiding reading. So I think it's time to just like kind of go through my TBR, really reevaluate, do I even want to read this book? And if not, like let's just get rid of it so it's not daunting me. So we're gonna do that as well, just a heads up. So this section here, we have the peas through the peas. I have a lot of pee, what? Oh wow, things, things got, my alphabetical order got really messed up here. Apparently it's P to P, but it's not supposed to be <laughs> P, P, B. Okay, um, yes. Okay, I think I'm gonna get rid of <laughs> Raisin in the Sun, you're staying with me. I liked you. Okay, I am going to part with Read Me by Leo Benedictus. This is again, another kind of like psychological thriller, really haunting very slow paced thriller. It's not like a edge of your seat read at all. I thought it was so enjoyable, but I have not thought about this book once since finishing it and doing a wrap up. I did not think about this book once. I honestly forgot about it. So time to go. But if you are looking for like an eerie, slow paced psychological thriller that feels very much like you vibes, the show you, read me. Leo Benedictus is really good, but it's very gory. Heads up. So this is going to go. Okay. What else do we have? Okay. I have one on here, friends. And that's going to be The Secret Society of the Pink Crystal Ball by Reese, Rissa Green. This is so fun. I hate this cover. But this was such a fun read. It's a YA and it has some like kind of like magical realism or like manifestation vibes. It's very pink and bubbly and poppy. I read it like two or three summers ago and I read it like on 4th of July, like in between hanging out with friends. Like I just kind of like came back at home and was like, I'm gonna take a nap, I'm tired. And just read all of this and there's something about that memory it feels like a core memory to me like it's hot outside having the fan on in between like swimming at a pool and then going to see the fireworks at fourth of july and reading this deliciously bubblegum pink ya book was so perfect for me i loved it so much i thought this was so wholesome and cute and sweet but i feel like someone else would enjoy it so much more than me. I might be making a really big mistake in letting this one go, but I don't think I will ever reread it, but it was just so sweet. If you just need like a feminine energy, like positive female friendship book, this is it. It's really, it's really sweet and I really liked it. And there was like no conflict in here, like at all. It was so wholesome. So I think that a younger reader would really enjoy this and I would love to like, I don't know, make make their day or their life and have a new favorite book that they read when they were younger, I think is so powerful. So I'm gonna part with this one, but I really did enjoy it. But I really do think it could be impactful for the right aged reader, like for sure. And then I also think I'm going to part from Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. 
I thought it was really enjoyable. There's so much to gain from this book. It's a graphic novel that follows a young girl. It's a memoir. I think it's really important and I have seen the movie version, the adaptation of this, and I will definitely be on the lookout for the second book in the series while I'm out thrifting, but I won't revisit this. This is something that I definitely feel like would be more impactful back out into the world that a younger reader might be able to pick up and learn from, or just anybody else will find and really enjoy and cherish more than me just having it on my shelves for no reason and not rereading it. Um, so I'm gonna donate Persepolis as well. My S's. Okay, I have a few. I think it's time to get rid of a few here. Most of these books have been on my shelves for a long time. Like they're some of my like absolute favorites that I won't part with, but I'm seeing a few here that I feel like I definitely could. I think I'm going to part with The Undesired by Ursa Sigurdardottir. This is a really disturbing thriller, but not in like a as disturbing as I wanted it sense. It is translated from Icelandic. Yes? I think, I think the author is Icelandic. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I've kept it on my shelves just because I really do enjoy having literature from different countries, specifically like thrillers or books that I just like really enjoyed reading, but I have not thought about this book once other than I just love saying her last name and I want to read so many other books by Ursa Sigurdar daughter. Would love to find more books um, if I see them used or floating around anywhere. I'm definitely picking it up, but thrillers just don't stick with me. They don't, they're just like not memorable. I don't think about them. So I think it's definitely okay for me to pass on this one. Um, I found it at Dollar Tree. So that's really cool. Brand new book uh, for $1, which is awesome. But I, I just don't think about thrillers again. Thrillers are books that like, I always enjoy the reading experience, but they don't stick with me. They don't usually become my favorite books of all time. So it's okay for me to pass them up and give them on to somebody else who might find that joy or maybe it might spark or reignite their love for reading because I feel like thrillers are so good for getting out of a reading slump or you just need a fun book to read. Um, so maybe this could be that for somebody else. All right, I think that's it for the shelf now. Um, again, some books on here I'm like a little hesitant. I'm like, mm, maybe, but I think in maybe another two to four months I might revisit and be like, okay, yeah, it's officially time for you to, for you to go. And then down here are my last few books here. They're all W books and I love every single one of these um, for their own reasons. So they are staying with me. And then this stack here, down here, these are all kind of like my big classic books, poetry um, that I want to get to. I just don't have room on my other TBR shelves and classics, like the big ones. We have like Anna Karenina, we have Madame Bovary, Jane Eyre, um, we have some Anne Bronte, Emily Dickinson, Sylvia Plath, like those kinds of books. I just kind of keep in this tiny little corner here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. They're just kind of collecting dust for now, but we're gonna pretend they don't exist. So that all being said, these are all the books that we have just gotten rid of on these shelves that are gonna go to a new home. And I really hope someone in my area finds them and loves them. That's a lot, look at that. And now I have more room on my shelves to fill it with books that I've read that I really, really love. You know, I just love that so much. I feel really good about this pile actually. Like I don't think I will miss saying goodbye to them. They've all been like enjoyable reads. That's why I've hung on to them for this long. If I don't like a book right away, after I finish filming my wrap up, I immediately donate it. So these are books that like, they were like three or four star reads, but I'm definitely okay with parting with them now. So let's set this down and I'm going to put you back over to my TBR shelves and we're gonna see if there's anything I can get rid of there. Ah, this is so much better to be able to sit and have a good decent filming angle. I'm just so happy I have this little corner. This is like my favorite little nook. But yes, let's go through my physical TBR and see if there are any books that we want to get rid of. Already I know there are a few. Um, I'm gonna go again, everything's alphabetical order, it just makes sense for me. So we definitely have some books that like, while they might intimidate me, I don't want to get rid of because I do feel like I'm going to gain something from them. So the first that I'm seeing that I'm like, ooh, we can definitely probably get rid of these. The Food Explorer by Daniel Stone. This is a nonfiction book about the persons uh, responsible for moving and transporting and introducing the Americas to different foods. Um, so about traveling, it's, it says the true adventures of a globetrotting botanist who transformed what America eats. 
I am so fascinated by this topic. I love books that talk about food and oh, everything about it, but I know myself and I know that if I have the chance to read more of like a fiction that deals with food, I'm gonna prefer that over a nonfiction um, book. I have found lately that books that, oh, but look at that glossy illustration, that's beautiful. Oh my God, I might cut these out just so I can have them. <laughs> These are beautiful illustrations. Oh no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Oh, look at that. See, now I'm getting excited, but I know, I know the last few like nonfiction books I've read have just been really dry, really boring, really all over the place. Um, I can't say that that's gonna be true with this book necessarily, but I just have not been enjoying reading nonfiction books, especially if they're not memoirs. Like I am just not feeling connected. I kind of don't care. I would much rather listen to information being given to me rather than physically read it. Reading for me, I've just realized is just such a like, it's just a hobby. It's a place. It's a pleasure. It's a time. It's like something for me. I want to read books that are going to make me feel good or think. And if it's going to feel laborious and like a textbook, that's not really my vibe lately. So I'm actually going to part with this one. It sounds so interesting. I love reading about food and culinary and travel and all these like yeah, just the history of food is so interesting, but I'm gonna pass this on because I don't think I'll ever actually want to read it, if that makes sense. Like I feel inspired to read it right now, but when I pick it up, I'm probably not gonna feel that same spark of inspiration. So this is gonna go. Um, All of these up here do feel pretty, pretty good to me. I'm definitely feeling excited for them. Some of them I feel like are books that I just kind of am anticipating that they're only going to be three star reads, which kind of sucks. You kind of just want your shelves to be filled with books that you feel like are going to be five stars. But I feel like for me, I get overloaded if I keep reading so many books that are just like so perfect. I just want sometimes like a fun romp. So a lot of these books feel like to me like they will just be fun romps and I might never think about them again. They might immediately go to a donate bin. But I find that that is actually the special thing about thrifting books is like when I donate them back, it doesn't feel like I've lost a ton of money because I don't buy books like brand brand new. It's so rare that I do. And if I do, they might be from Dollar Tree. They're in the bargain section of my bookstore. It's okay if I lose out on that like one to five dollars. <laughs> that being said, I am totally okay with getting rid of some of these books because most of them I did find for very, very cheap. Um, next I'm seeing on this bottom shelf here actually is Legacy by Jessica Blank. This is a book that has been on several of my like TBR jar challenges. It's a YA book, takes place in the 90s about deforestation and protest groups and like kind of like 90s grunge vibes, which is definitely an atmosphere and a mood that I'm interested in. But again, I just don't feel like this would be anything more than a three star. And if it was, I'd be really, really surprised. I just can't find myself like excited or interested. It just seems like a book to read a book, you know? Um, plus this cover really is just like that, my favorite. Um, so I'm going to donate this one as well. And hopefully maybe it will actually go to a young adult or like adolescent that it inspires in environmentalism. I think that would be really cool, but yeah, we're going to pass on this one too. Okay. What else do we have down here? Okay. Yes. I'm going to part with my sister, Marilyn. Uh, this is a memoir of Marilyn Monroe, and this has also been on a TBR where I did talk about, I don't have a fascination with Marilyn Monroe. I just thought it would be interesting to get to know her through a personal lens because this is written from her sister and her mother. Um, but I just like never really feel pulled to read this. I kind of just like don't care. Again, it just feels like a book to read a book. I found it while thrifting. Sometimes I just get so excited while I'm thrifting that I'm like, oh, this sounds really interesting. And I put it in my cart and I buy it and I bring it home. But I feel no actual pull to read it. So that's the case with this one. I'm just gonna pass it on. Oh yes, okay. Stern Men, Elizabeth Gilbert. This is like a lobster fisherman romance love story thing. Kind of like Romeo and Juliet. They're fighting lobster boat and then they fall in love or something. And it sounds cute, it sounds like it could be really fun, but I just like don't feel pulled to read this. Um, it just doesn't seem like really my kind of book necessarily. I love aquatic themes in books so, so much, 
but I just don't know when I'll ever feel pulled to actually read this one. It definitely feels a little bit like family saga, a lot of like just kind of a, I don't know the right word for this one, kind of like a book club book. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, but like I just feel like it's not going to talk about any bigger themes that I personally enjoy, like time, physics, space, mortality, morality. I like topics that are just like really vague and conceptual, so something like this just feels not enough. I either like things to be really fluffy in my books where like I don't need a deeper meaning or it needs to have a lot of meaning that I can like grip onto and I just feel like this is a story for a story. <laughs> Am I making sense? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so this is just gonna, just gonna go. Okay, anything else down here? Ah, uh, yes, we have a few. The last two here. First is gonna be <laughs> The Year of Wonders, a novel of the plague by Geraldine Brooks. This has shown up on so many of my TBRs. I've had it on my shelf since I started my booktube journey. This was a part of my first ever like vlog I ever did. I went thrifting and found this along with Stern Men. And I just like do not feel pulled to read this at all. At all. Like the language does seem like it might be beautiful. I just like don't want to read it. I feel like if I want to read from this time period, I would much prefer just to read a classic rather than historical fiction. I just like don't want to read this anymore, you know, and I think that's okay. Our tastes change and not saying that this is a bad book because I never gave it a chance, but I just feel like I want to get into more classics and I have been getting into classics so much more recently. It just makes more sense for me to like pick up a classic instead of reading a historical fiction in this time I'm in in my life right now. So I'm gonna give this away and I don't think I'll miss it. Last one here, friends, we are going to get rid of you Were Made For This by Michelle Sachs. This is a, again, like family saga, literary fiction that just follows a young married couple and their kid. And I just don't really vibe with books really necessarily about motherhood unless it's from the perspective of like a daughter. And I just like don't relate. I don't feel anything. I don't feel pulled to this. I don't feel curious. I don't really care. I'm just so detached from this genre where it is like familial relationships and like domestic disputes and stuff. If I'm gonna read that kind of thing, I'd want it to be intertwined with like a thriller element or maybe a magical realism element, but anything that's just like a little too grounded in reality of domestic life, I'm just kind of like not really into it, especially if it's just really plot driven or character driven, especially if it doesn't just have like more to say. So I'm going to pass on this as well. So we didn't unhaul a whole lot from my TBR, but what we did, I feel really good about. These are books that I would just kind of like pretend I didn't have in a TBR jar challenge. I'd be like, ah, let's just like pretend I don't have that one and move on. So I feel really, really good about that. The rest of these I'm feeling really strong about. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like some of them are more summery books that I want to read, like summer and spring vibes. Some of them definitely more like fall and winter. Definitely still some books that daunt me, but I still want to be challenged. I just don't want to pick up a book like these. To me, these just feel like three star books. Like I'm not going to necessarily gain anything, which is sad. You know, I don't want to judge a book by its cover or what I think of it but I feel like other people might enjoy them more and look forward to them more. Hello, Winston. So there we go. These are all of the books that I'm unhauling from my physically read shelves and then my TBR shelves. I'm feeling really, really good about this. I'm feeling so good about it. I'm so happy. I feel a lot better. I feel like I can breathe a little bit more. I feel like the books that I have now are just books that I genuinely want to read as well as genuinely want to keep. So if you want to stay tuned and subscribe, if you're not already subscribed to see my little free library outing, hopefully in a few weeks here, when I take all of these books to little free libraries around town, see if I can add any more books to my physical TBR here, that'd be fantastic. And then these books can go and find a new loving home. But for now, I'm just gonna set them aside until that video is ready. So thank you all so incredibly much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video and going through my shelves with me. It feels really, really good. I hope you're all doing really well and I'll see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.